Tribe 12. I'm just gonna get this right out of the gate. This is my favorite Slenderman series. Some stories just hit a chord with the right kind of audience, and Tribe 12 hit that for me. I've wanted to make a review of this series, just talking about all the things I like about it before I even thought of Slender Month as a concept. This is the one I've been looking forward to the most. Everman Hybrid took a while to release because that series was more exhausting to get through, and I didn't know the entire story off the top of my head. You don't have to worry about that with this one. I know the story inside and out, I know a good portion of the behind the scenes details too. I love this series so much that its creator is pretty much the only person I actively follow on Tumblr. Yes, Tumblr, my least favorite website. I use it to keep tabs on this series. Let's cap off the last of the big three Slenderman series. Welcome to the review of Tribe 12. <laughs> The story starts off with some familiar looking white text over black background. Our main character Noah Maxwell tells us about his cousin Milo Asher, who he had a strong friendship with before drifting apart and recently Milo committing suicide. He posts several videos of the last time he saw Milo the last time he visited, and notices Milo acting strangely as well as, you guessed it, Slenderman in the background of the videos. He goes to Milo's funeral soon after posting the videos and meets up with his grandfather Carl, who found his YouTube channel and warns him about De Grossman a horror figure from his childhood in Germany, and how he saw him once after seeing a horrified Nazi soldier in World War II. After this, due to some paranoia, Noah has begun filming himself sleeping, and one night finds a box outside of his front door, left for him by an unknown visitor. The box contains a note, some electronic pieces, a tape, and a busted cell phone that later gets a phone call for Noah to answer. After that, Noah's account is hacked into and a video completely different from anything we've seen so far is shown. After getting some items and a letter delivered to his house, he decides to call Milo's mother's ex-husband, John Fletcher, for some information on what might have happened to his mother as she's gone off the grid. Then some things happen on Thanksgiving that don't really matter because it's mostly a filler arc that doesn't go anywhere and was apparently a pain in the ass to put together, so we're moving on. Noah later tweets about going to the nature trail he and Milo went to in order to see if he can find anything. And then this is posted to his channel, another black and white video in the style of Hello There. Soon after, Noah posts what happened at the nature trail. He followed Slenderman and was eventually taken by him into whatever realm he seems to inhabit. Noah then films himself asking his parents about a fire that burned his house down when he was a child, where apparently Slenderman appeared, and then gets a letter covered in purple duct tape that seems to mention a certain Dr. Corinthal. One night soon after, he hears knocking in the closet of his room and finds a bug device hidden elsewhere in his room. He analyzes it with his friend Edward and finds some hidden files. He then hosts a livestream which is interrupted by the observer inserting a video in the middle of the stream. Then he heads up north to see if his grandfather will help him out any to no avail and to meet up with the Everman hybrid crew to talk about the contents of the envelope he received. You guys look goofy as shit pointing your cameras at each other. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm laughing about this. Ready? Ready? Feeling paranoid on Halloween, he stays in a hotel, but is teleported around through time and space and harassed by the figures seen in the black and white videos. On November 11th, Noah's birthday, it's revealed that he was once again taken by Slenderman, and the group of entities working for him known as the Collective, consisting of figures named The Observer, Firebrand, Priscillus, Cursor, Swain, Deadhead, and Mr. Scars. The Collective want Noah to retrieve a journal in his grandfather's possession, written by a Nazi soldier named Sebastian that contains vitally important information about an as-of-yet unknown event that took place that could cause great harm to them and Slenderman. Noah then posts about what happened the night he was taken after being returned to the normal world in two parts. The second part, November 11th, uploaded first- I fucking saw you! I fucking saw you! I saw those damn glasses! Why you pull me off the bed? Huh? Asshole! Quit hiding! Show yourself for once! 
one, you fucking coward! No, no, it can't be! No, no, it can't be! That's, that's, that's impossible! Oh. At the first part, Mary Asher phone call uploaded second. More fucking games. He's gonna ding dong ditch me real fucking scary. You can do better than that. <gasps> hey, hey, buddy, how you doing? Here for my birthday, huh? Well, I got a gift for you right here. After an update video, he schedules a meeting with the crew of Dark Harvest after a manifest reveals that Mary Asher, Milo's mother, was part of the group that has been tormenting them, known as the Order. Noah arranges a meeting with the Order and things go... Alex and Chris, uh, I found them after doing some research and... Oh! That's <gasps> You're fucking retarded. Not good. Knowing that the observer is going to kill or take him on his birthday, he posts a video letting us know about a live stream he's going to be hosting the night of. The live stream goes up on schedule, and a drunk Noah talks to his audience about how he doesn't give a fuck about nothing before he begins giving a fuck about something. Let me let me show you the one shit that I give. It's right here. Oh, look at that. There's nothing in... I don't give any shits, do I? I don't care. Doesn't deserve the sweaty nipples off my back. I don't want to die anymore. I don't want to die anymore. This is stupid. What? what? I don't want to die anymore. This is so stupid. I'm really fucking scared, guys. I don't want to die. All the while, someone going by F on his Twitter is telling him not to give up and that he's trying to stop the Observer from taking it. F soon shows up at midnight, revealing himself to be Firebrand, a member of the Collective and the future version of Noah. He manages to save Noah from being taken by the Collective by teleporting him through time, into the closet the night he found the device and into the hotel the night he was taken by Slenderman. He soon sends Noah a message letting him know that he has been freed from the Collective's influence thanks to Habit, and that an old friend is on his way with a briefcase for him. That old friend turns out to be a reanimated Milo, known now as Mr. Scars, giving Noah a briefcase full of his old belongings, including his journal that's filled with vital information, though he's unable to open it, a tape, and cash to burn. Uh, I'm rich? It wasn't easy, but you can thank me later. Bye for now. The tape shows Milo after being reanimated, going through a house and eventually killing his own mother, Mary, revealed to be Cursor. Christmas arrives and Noah receives a letter from our favorite edgelord, Habit, who wants to lend Noah a hand in dealing with Slenderman and the Collective. He tells Noah about the symbol that's been appearing on his social media accounts and in the videos, and how it can be used to sever Slenderman's control and influence over him. You see, this little symbol right here basically represents severance, cutting the puppet strings. Do you catch my drift? meant for, but it, it can. Thinking that it's just a hack tool is an insult to what it is, quite frankly. Um, I'll put it in a way that you understand, though I can't take it as an insult, you just don't understand. Yes, Noah, it can hack into your accounts. It was used that way, but broader scale, it can hack into a human being. Broader scale, it can hack into something grander, something much bigger, something much more powerful. If you were to, let's say, put this on something, and that something were to enter someone, then that someone 
now loses control over the person that did the, the thing in the beat. Put it on a knife, you fucking retard, and strip him in the neck. Remember how I said in the last video that Vinny might have a chance against Slenderman? This is what I was talking about. Habit is working with Noah, who he knows will become Firebrand, a very powerful entity, in order to kill Slenderman or otherwise get him out of the picture. Noah wanders around through two hells in a row, New Jersey and an alternate dimension that Habit seems to, uh, inhabit. He runs across Jeff and- wait, what? He died! Now he's telling Noah to kill himself? What? Uh, okay, Noah's back home at least. He's not doing so hot, though. In fact, he seems to be doing worse than we've ever seen him. Isolation has not done Noah any favors, and our handsome boy looks like shit. Boardwalk's waiting, huh? Well, guess what? I can wait another fucking thousand years, cause I ain't going. I ain't going, motherfucker! Suck my dick, Confucius, because you have been declined, bitch. Also, Milo's journal is talking to him now. So that's interesting. Soon thanks to Twitter and a video by Firebrand and the Observer, it's revealed that Noah went into the Collective's realm and came back with the knowledge needed to finally crack that journal open. We soon see how exactly that went down. Noah begins sleepwalking and stumbles across a portal in his house that leads to the boardwalk, where the Observer has been telling him to go in order for Noah to bring him the journal Carl has. I'm waiting. Okay, come on. Try to, try to tell me something? Noah is taken in there several times in a sleepwalking trance state and eventually wakes up there having no idea how he got there. He tries to take Milo's journal and run home, but he drops it and Slenderman appears, teleporting Noah back home without the journal. Noah goes back to retrieve it but becomes trapped in the Collective's dimension, eventually encountering the Observer face to face, who pushes him down in a seemingly infinitely tall tower. <laughs> Though Noah manages to survive this. The next and most recent video shows what happened afterwards, with Noah continuing to run around, trapped in the collective dimension and hiding from a giant spider, say hi to the giant spider, his name is Mongo, before running into a version of himself from an unspecified point in the future. Not quite Firebrand yet, but there's not much of Noah left exactly. Future Noah shows present Noah some things that he has, including a can of Spam, a Nazi knife, Sebastian's journal, and a bag labeled bird that he fucking eats from. You hungry? You want some? What? What is that? It's fresh. What the fuck is that? Ugh! Flamin' young. I promise. Half of the day. Are you sure? You don't want any? Hell no! Or for me, I'm growing both. Oh, don't eat, don't eat that. Ah! Oh! Oh god! What is that? I didn't give myself that answer. Present Noah isn't having any of future Noah's bullshit. He's acting crazy, he grew his hair out and he looks like a punk in some shitty garage band, he's not giving him the journal, this is bullshit. Future Noah doesn't take kindly to this and slashes present Noah's hands open, right where the eyes on Firebrand's hands are. He gives him a hundred sided die and tells him to roll a five or an eight to get out of the jungle. We don't know just yet how Noah got out of the Collective's dimension, as the videos have yet to catch up with the present timeline, but that's the story of Tribe 12 so far. Okay, as much as I love this series, and I mean love it, it starts off... bad. I mean, if this is the first Slenderman series you're watching ever, it's not so bad, 
But if you've seen Marble Hornets, you've seen the first few Tribe 12 videos. You have a main character who's a young college-age student who somehow is able to live in a very nice house completely on his own, going over old forgotten tapes of a friend who is long since gone, when suddenly this character begins acting strangely due to the influence of Slenderman, which the main character was unaware of at the time and who is now stalking him. Sound familiar? You also of course have the white text over black background, numbered entry, excuse me, submission titles, and the whole vibe is very Marble Hornets knockoff. There's a reason for this. You see, initially the series was just supposed to start off as a short homage to Marble Hornets that would have ended sometime around the night recording video with a joke ending. A similar concept can be seen on the creator Adam Rosser's YouTube channel Nimbus Films in a video called Monster in My Closet, which, by the way, is hilarious. I'm really fucking scared because there's a fucking monster in my closet. And I got my camera on because I want to get it on tape. And... It's been making fucking noises, and I'm really fucking scared. <laughs> no, it's fucking there, and I'm afraid it's gonna fucking kill me. <laughs> fucking much. So in the beginning, the series was never meant to be taken seriously. Just a tribute to Marble Hornets filmed with some friends and family. Then people started actually getting invested in the story and views started to come in, so Adam thought, hey, maybe I should not end this with a joke about a cardboard cutout of a can of monster energy drink attacking me. And that's how we got the rest of the story as it is, and thank goodness for that. However, even if this is your first Slenderman series, you don't know anything about Marble Hornets or any of that, there's the issue of the acting. I think Adam has gotten much better as an actor. God knows I can't fucking cry on cue, that is some impressive shit right there. But when he started off, he was not very good. Milo's actor wasn't any better either. In fact, while I'm talking about this, I'd like to talk about the acting in general. I think both Adam and the actor for The Observer are good. Observer's actor definitely has a lot of fun with his role, and it shows. But almost everyone else, eh. Like, I get it. Don't worry, I get it. These are your actual parents here. They aren't classically trained actors or anything. But man, some of these people could just take you out of the story. Like, look at Milo here when he's coughing in Milo's tape. He looks like a cartoon character or something. Oh god, I'm coughing. I think I have the sick. I think Mary's actress also delivers a lot of her lines really flatly. Some of them sound good, but a lot of the time I just feel like she's reading off a script. It's not even like she's delivering them in a really dry voice like some kind of sociopath, which she totally is. It's just wooden sounding. I don't blame the creator. I know these were probably the best people he could get for the roles. And I don't blame the actors either, because they're just doing this for a web series on YouTube. It's not a big deal. Hell, speaking of Milo's tape, that's not even Milo's actor playing him in the first person segments. He and Adam had a falling out, so Adam had to modify his voice and give the story excuse that Milo's reanimated body had his throat slit. He's managed to keep this story together even though actors are leaving like they're pieces from a highly unstable Jenga tower. It's impressive. But much like the issues I had with Everman Hybrid's lack of cohesion in terms of making the story easy to understand, this is my thumbs up asterisk. If you can power through the first few videos, you're basically in the clear. I'd say get it to at least hello there before you give up entirely. But on the topic of Everman Hybrid not conveying its story in a concise way, let's talk about how Tribe 12 handles that. <laughs> This is one of the aspects I love most about Tri-12. See, like Everman Hybrid, there's a few accounts to follow here. You have the main YouTube channel and Twitter, standard stuff. There was a mostly supplementary Formspring page for basic questions and answers that was replaced by Ask.fm when Formspring went down some years back. And most recently, there was an entirely supplementary Vine account that's now defunct since Vine is gone, and a blog for talking about the contents in Milo's journal. There's also one more in-game account to follow, but we'll get to that in a bit. So quite a few accounts, and unlike Everman Hybrid, these are really only for following one person. So if there's so many damn accounts to follow, why do I like this? Simple, because anytime something important to the plot happens on these social media accounts, Noah talks about it in his videos. When he's taken by the collective and his Twitter account is hacked into, he talks about that in an update video. When he finds some old live streams with more plot information, he talks about that in an update video. When he posts on his Twitter about dreams he's been having involving Mr. Scars and his thoughts on the identities of the collective members, he lets us know about them in an update video. 
He has a lot of these update videos for just keeping his audience informed of what's been going on outside of the YouTube channel, and letting all of us know what's happening without us having to switch accounts. Good God! It's almost like he wants us to be able to follow along with the story or something. If there's something very plot relevant that the creator wants us to know about, you can bet that at some point it's going to get brought up in a video. The only two things in the story I haven't seen brought up in any video are specifically the event that occurred in Germany that's written about in Sebastian's journal, and an incident Noah describes involving surviving a boat capsizing as a child while his grandfather was present. The story is far from over, so you can bet your ass those will be brought up at some point in the future, especially considering the event that Sebastian describes in his journal is paramount to the story. There are also codes and puzzles, but most of them are easy enough to solve, and even then, most of them are supplementary. Though I remember this one being a head-scratcher in the Tribe 12 Discord for a bit. Anyway, after dealing with Everman Hybrid, this was something I just had to bring up. It's good to include some quality of life stuff like this for your audience to make it easy to follow. <laughs> In an issue not at all exclusive to internet series, I think some series suffer the issue of having a lot of characters to follow. So many that their personalities get bogged down since you have to give some time to all of them while also advancing the story. If the piece of meme is exclusively a character study, for instance something like The Breakfast Club, then this typically isn't an issue. But a lot of shows, movies, and web series suffer from this problem. Tribe 12 avoids this by pretty much narrowing it down to one major character, Noah. The Observer is also very prevalent, and a lot of his personality shows through his videos, but Noah never leaves our focus. This goes to such an extent that the next most prevalent character, Firebrand, is still just Noah. Noah is literally his own best friend and biggest help in the series. By focusing so much on a very small cast, we get a great read on all of their personalities. Noah is a hothead, he runs right into danger and then spits in danger's face, but he's still scared and easily overwhelmed and manipulated. When Noah is talking about Firebrand in a video he posted, he says, Gotta admit though, uh, when, uh, when you gave Daddy Long Legs the finger, I smiled. Something I would do. And we know that's true because at this point we've gotten to know him. And that absolutely is something he'd do. This is the same man who chased Slenderman out in an open forested area with nothing but a bicycle, his sailor's mouth, and some sick-ass steampunk goggles. Yeah, I think he'd give him the finger along the way. Noah also goes through a lot of change as a character. I'd call it development, but honestly, the way the story's going, it's more like regression or deterioration. Future Noah eats from a bag that's just labeled bird. He's only gonna get worse from here. Noah now can get very angry and bitter towards pretty much everyone, and even though before it was due to him shutting people out of his life on purpose, I think now he's just become kind of an asshole because the world keeps fucking shitting on him. So it's cause and effect of a character trait growing through the events of the story. They kinda like good writing, can you imagine that? Even though, again, some of the acting can be wooden, the writing of the characters is good. You get a sense of what they're all about. Observer is a complete sadist who revels in torturing Noah, and I mean revels in it. How much fun the actor has playing the Observer really translates into how much fun the Observer has torturing Noah. Mary is a sociopath who is willing to let both of her husbands and son die and get taken by the Collective to save her own skin. What a bitch, I hope someone shoots her. Oh, I think the only character who's really lacking is Milo. He's kind of just a plot device, though I suspect we'll learn a lot more about him once we really start getting into the contents of his journal. Oh yeah, I forgot, his fucking journal has personality. Shut up! Shut up! Open me. Shut up! What a wacky guy. 
But yeah, characters are a strong point of the series. I don't think I'd have stuck around with it this long if I didn't enjoy watching Noah and if I didn't think he was a well-written character. I do hope we'll get some spotlight on the other collective members soon though. Let's move on. So we talked about how at the beginning, the story was pretty bad. But if I had to compare Tribe 12 to one thing, it'd be the soup at the beginning of Ratatouille. You got this guy going and making this soup, it's pretty bad. But then you start adding things to it. You start giving the soup some love and care, sprinkle in some basil, and man, suddenly this soup changes things. I'm gonna tell you the first time I knew there was something really, really special about this series. So I started watching when November 11th was the newest video on the channel, and I was liking it so far. My typical reaction to a lot of things was, hey, that was pretty cool, and that was enough to keep me going. But when I became hooked, when this became one of my favorite YouTube channels of all time, was the livestream incident. Which I was actually there for when it was happening live, I was psyched for it. It was right after Noah sees himself as Firebrand and gets teleported back in time. Right here, when he's the one knocking in his closet in the device video. Why did this moment change so much for me? Because if you go back to the device video and listen really closely, you can faintly hear future Noah shouting, Oh my god, it's me, Noah. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's me! Noah! This was something planned out for years, and it seemed like such an innocuous thing at the time. Back then, I thought it was just some spooky paranormal event. But this shit made me scour every single video for any detail I could find from then on. And I still miss shit! Death Trap Exodus has Noah wrapping his hand up with the cloth that future Noah gives him after cutting his hand open, and also shows the Observer looking at Noah after he falls off the tower in Pitfall. Giving the sense that every single little detail matters makes the series so much fun to watch and try to put all the pieces together. And it's done in a way that isn't incredibly confusing. It's the perfect example of a good twist. A good twist says, hey, we gave you all the information you needed, you should feel stupid for not putting it all together. And Tribe 12 does that spectacularly. The story itself is also just well put together and interesting, and all along the way it follows a character that the series makes you care about. There are obviously some hiccups, the series isn't perfect, I already talked about the beginning being a pretty shameless Marvel Hornets ripoff to the point where even the creator doesn't like those videos. Anyway, there's also the Thanksgiving videos which are basically just filler. We don't really get anything out of them that we didn't already know or don't find out later. All we get out of it is that the Collective can control Noah and make him do things he wouldn't normally do, but we already find that out later in Crawl Space anyway, so eh. Also, the second video here was apparently a massive pain in the ass for him to put together because the actress who played Sarah kept flaking during filming, so we had to scrape the video together using whatever means he could. This is why Sarah is hardly featured on screen. I didn't notice it all my first time watching, but looking at it now, knowing that information, it's kind of distracting. The whole arc basically got wrapped up on Twitter and in one of the live streams, and it didn't amount to much. But those are the only real issues I have with the story. Just two minor points and some skippable videos. Everything else is smart, it's pretty scary, it's really funny. Hey, do any of you guys know the way out of here? No, I've been heading that way for five hours now! Useless! And it's one of my favorite parts of this whole series because it's just so much damn fun to follow. <laughs> Much like not talking about Evan's acting in the Everman Hybrid video, not talking about the special effects in this series would be criminal, and people in the Tribe 12 Discord would probably find this video and start doxing me. And uh, I don't have much to say on this besides the effects are really, really good. As far as Slenderman series go, these are easily the best effects I've seen. I don't want to talk about it too, too much, because as George Lucas famously said, a special effect is just a tool to tell a story, and a special effect without a story is a pretty boring thing. But the fact that this is all made with the Adobe Suite by a guy who's not even studying film or editing or anything like that in college, congrats on making it into optometry school by the way, is fucking astounding. I can barely cobble together what you're seeing right now in Sony Vegas, and this is way easier to learn than the Adobe Suite. So few Slenderman series bothered to actually give him animated tentacles, 
So seeing Tribe 12 go above and beyond and giving him really solid looking ones is very refreshing. The collective videos are great too, they're all extremely stylish and capture a very creepy vibe. When I was first watching, I could barely get through these without scrolling down with my audio turned way down in case of a jump scare, which the series has a lot of, especially at the end of collective videos. This one at the end of Happy Birthday got me bad. I'm okay with jump scares in this context since these videos are intentionally antagonistic and are trying their damnedest to scare the shit out of Noah, so pulling cheap tricks like that works in that context. But yeah, the effects are really something else. I love Slenderman getting like 12 arms here. I love all the transitions and effects on the collective videos. I love this eye hole in the tree. It's all great. <laughs> So for a really long time in Tri-12, there wasn't too much in the way of audience interaction, although there were a few notable exceptions. For instance, a few times the Observer hacked into Noah's Twitter and Formspring, taking questions the audience had to answer, and at one point, even giving them a riddle to solve so that they could get some new information, a picture of Milo after overdosing. But there's one big one that really shines in terms of audience interaction, and even has a bit of real-world participation. Okay, so telling you what the deal is here without explaining everything is going to be really confusing, so I'll tell you the story. I skipped over this in the story summary. Basically, a while back on the Tribe 12 Reddit page, there was this user named Scriniari who kept spamming the board with the following message. I am Scriniari. You are Sensum. You are required. The loop must be maintained. The Sensum will take the keyword and submit it to the archive. The subreddit users assumed he was simply a game jacker and deleted his posts. I mean, hey, I would have. That's not even the worst game jacking attempt I've ever seen. Hello, no, Maxwell. You do not know us, but we know you. We have been watching your game progress over the past two years. We have watched as you've been taken time and again. We have watched as you struggle to survive and understand what it is that is happening to you. And now we have watched you reach out for help. Noah, our eye has been watching with anticipation. And now we believe it is time you understand something. Your opponent it is not like anything else in this world. It is a monstrous entity, and it is always watching. Your constant attempts at being a step ahead of it only put you two steps behind. This thing will not lose to you so easily. It is a being that doesn't like to lose. Mary Asher, it wants you to find her. It wants you to know, and we want you to know too. But are you ready to know? Keep that in mind when the time comes. Do not stop the search for her. Simply be careful where you put your trust, and do not believe everything you are told. Your game has been going on for two long years, and even our eye does not see an end in sight. Be careful, be strong, and remember, Noah, our eye is not the only one that's watching. A little while passes before Scriniari shows up again, this time in the Tribe 12 Discord. I was actually there when he began posting in there, but I didn't get any pictures of anything. I can't remember if I called him out as the same guy who was spamming the subreddit or not, though I did recognize his name. He starts spamming and eventually the Discord kicks in. Not long afterwards, this video is posted. Uh oh. Holy shit. My mind was blown here. We got played like fucking fiddles. 
After this happened, everyone rushed to solve the puzzle in the video based on the one hint we'd been given, leading to a hidden video on the Tribe 12 channel. This video created a message that when deciphered, led to a secret image which led to yet another hidden video, this one showing the second page of the Order's manifest. He then said he would return in seven days to answer one question the Discord member appointed as a representative would ask him. The users put it to a poll, and I would I would just like to say at this point, I voted for him to answer the question about the event described in Sebastian's journal. A lot of other people decided, however, to vote for, what info can you give to us that Noah does not yet know, but needs to? Scriniari's response? All of it. Then he went back to hiding more clues and cryptic puzzles because apparently that's the way we like to roll, you fucking idiot! Anyways, this is just the beginning of everything that happened with Scriniari. There's so much more, and hidden videos, one of which was posted on a completely unrelated YouTube channel. Not even unlisted or anything, it's just on some rando's channel. And eventually the Discord got their heads out of their asses and asked an important question regarding the story. A Discord user was also sent a device which led to more clues to the puzzle. This entire thing is just great on so many levels. The Game Jacker fakeout is my absolute favorite part, but it's great that Tribe 12 is also getting some audience interaction in the mix like Everyman Hybrid. My only issue with this is that it's a bit hard to follow, and it started and continues on out-of-game discussion locations. So that can hurt your immersion a little bit, especially when Adam Rosner himself comes into the same Discord. Thankfully, all of the important information is in the operations channel of the Discord, so if that's all you care about or want to consider canon, you can just mute all the other channels. The Scriniari arc seems far from over, so if you want all the story details, I'd recommend catching up with what's happened on this page of the Tribe 12 wiki and following the operations tab of the Tribe 12 Discord. Links to both will be in the description. <laughs> In spite of everything I've said about the beginning of the web series and how hard that can be to get through, in spite of all the bad parts of the cracks in the hole, this remains my all-time favorite web series. Not just Slenderman series, any of them, any universe, whatever, this one's my favorite. I love Noah and his character. I love the story. I like the collective. I think they're a great spin on the normal types of proxies that are just edgy teenagers being mind controlled by Slenderman. Tiki Toby, I am looking right at you. The effects are great. It's just, it's just a great series. And I can't wait to see where it goes from here. It's hit a lot of roadblocks that for most content creators would stop a project like this dead in its tracks. And while uploads have definitely slowed down, the amount of effort and care that goes into this makes every video worth it. This is a quality web series. I'd recommend this to anyone who would want to watch something like Marble Hornets, but so very different after the first few episodes. This one gets a thumbs up with a much smaller asterisk than Everyman Hybrid. You know what, fuck it, I give it two thumbs up with a small asterisk, I love it so much. Part of the reason I've brought up Tribe 12 so much in past videos is because I want more people to watch it. And now that it has a dedicated video on my channel, I'm gonna tell you to do exactly that. Give it a shot. Maybe you'll find a new favorite web series like I did when Livestream Incident came out. That's the end of this episode. Take care everyone. See you next time.